eternal life is to know the one true God in Jesus Christ. So if eternal life is to know God, then tell me about it. What's his desires? What's his will? What makes him laugh? What makes him cry? Show me who he is. Tell me about Jesus. If eternal life is to know the one true God in Jesus Christ, then maybe we should figure out what the word know really means. The word know is the same word that you'll read in Genesis that Adam knew his wife. It's intimate. It's a oneness. It's a deep relationship. A knowing. So how do we get to know Jesus? The same way you get to know anyone. You spend time with them. For example, does going to church and saying a sinner's prayer and talking about him and hearing about him, getting baptized, paying tithes, doing daily Bible devotions, does this count as spending time with Jesus? No. It's the same way if you want to get to know someone in an intimate way. You want to know their heart or who they are. Do you sit down in a building and hear others talk about him? Or maybe give money in their name or do something in their name? Maybe read stories or books about them? Is this going to help you get to know them personally and intimately? No. You can't just have head knowledge or look at them to get to know them. So how do you get to know someone personally? You stop, be still, sit down with them and talk with them every day, sometimes for hours, and then they'll talk back. You get to know them. It's two ways. It's like a close friend. It's, you get to the point to where you know what they're going to say next. You know what they're thinking. You know what they like or dislike. You don't ask them to come sit in your house and say, hey, what's going on, and go about your own business. It's just like a marriage. It's intimate and deep. A connection between two parties. It's what, it's what becoming one or one-minded means. Jesus says he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father except through him. This means coming into him or becoming one with him. To know him. No one can come to the Father except they know him. The truth. So, this is how we are sure and positive, without a doubt, know that we have come to know Him. And remember, to know the one true and living God in Jesus is eternal life. So don't you think it would be important to know if we truly know Him or if we are truly one with Him? Yeah, how important we're talking about your eternity here. We're talking about your forever. Whether you have eternal life or not, this is something to think about. So I'd say that's pretty important. The Bible tells us it's very important to examine ourselves to see if we are truly in the faith or in Jesus or one with Him. And this is how we know that we know Him. We keep His commands. The commands of Jesus was summed up into two. Love God with all and love your neighbor as yourself. And the one who abides, the one who abides in him. In. What is in? The one who stays, knows, continues, and remains in him. It's a oneness. Ought also to walk even as he walked. As who walked? Jesus. How did Jesus walk? In love. His love is an unselfish, undefiled, holy, and pure love towards others. No greater love than this, a man will lay down his life for another. How do you lay down your life? You lay down you, your wants, your desires, your dreams, 
your comfort for another so that they may know or come to know Jesus and the one true God so that they may receive eternal life through Jesus. It's sacrificial. It's doing God's will and not yours because self don't exist anymore. You have given yourself as a living sacrifice unto God. This is our reasonable service to God. So to put it in basic English, salvation or being saved, being a believer, born again, Christian, with eternal life, whatever you want to call it, you don't have it unless you come to know Jesus. It's relationship, not a prayer. Nowhere in the Bible does it say a prayer or a prayer of salvation. The sinner's prayer will give you eternal life. This is man's doctrine. It's the biggest lie you'll hear in the church, meaning it's just man's tradition and man's way. The Bible tells us there is a way that will seem right to a man, but in the end it will lead them to hell or death. And it also tells us in the last days there will be false teachers and false preachers. That in the end even the very elect or God's children could be deceived. Don't be one of these who go after teachers giving nice sermons of once saved, always saved, or repeat a prayer and you're okay. It's a lie alive from the deepest part of hell. So what is the prayer? It's just words of a covenant spoken in faith to God. They're the promise. It's like a marriage. Say you have two people up there and they're exchanging vows. The vows is like your prayer. When you come before Jesus and you say, Jesus, I want you in my life. I want you in my heart. That's like vows in a marriage. It's a commitment. You're, you're making a covenant with them. But tell me this, just because you spoke the words of a covenant, does it automatically guarantee you that you're married? Just because you stood in front of the altar and exchanged vows and gave your word to be that person, does it automatically guarantee that you're married? No. That's just the first step of the marriage. If that's all you did to be married, that would be bad. There's more. Next, you come to know that person. Ask anyone who's been married for a number of years. Did they know them in an intimate relationship, in an intimate way, just because they exchanged vows and said, I'll be yours forever? No. It takes time, patience, persistence, dying of self to build or make a relationship or a marriage. It's becoming one. And salvation or eternal life is the same way. It's an ongoing thing. It's a lifestyle. It's not a one-time commitment at the altar. It's like a marriage. It's a relationship with God Himself. So here's a challenge. Love God. Keep His commands. Love Him with all you are, with all your energies, and love others in the same way you love yourself. Spend more time with Jesus. Get to know Him on a deep, intimate level. Make Him your everything. Everything. Paul said, I count everything like dumb in comparison to knowing Jesus. Why? Why did he say this? He had it figured out because knowing him is eternal life. And that's it. Nothing else but knowing him intimately is going to save you. It's not a prayer. It's not just going to church. It's just one-on-one, -on -one, deep, intimate relationship with the creator of the universe. It's the only reason Jesus died. It wasn't to miss hell. It's so we could know our heavenly father again our real Father, to know God. 